How will the Snapdragon 8 Elite powered OnePlus 13, Red Magic 10 Pro and IQ 13 stack up against the Dimensity 9400 powered Vivo X200 Pro and Oppo Find X8 Pro in five different benchmark tests, where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates, all five devices are running on three nanometer process nodes and none of their CPUs have efficiency cores. But the Snapdragon 8 Elite found inside the OnePlus Red Magic and IQ brings their max clock speeds up to an insane 4.32 gigahertz, while the Dimensity 9400 found inside the Vivo and Oppo sits at 3.63 gigahertz. The OnePlus Vivo and Oppo pack in LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, while the Red Magic and IQ are kitted with LPDDR5X Ultra RAM and UFS 4.1 storage, though the Red Magic uses UFS 4.1 Pro storage. The OnePlus Vivo and Oppo have 120Hz LTPO displays, the IQ has a 144Hz LTPO display, but the Red Magic has a dynamic 144Hz refresh rate. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes, with the Red Magic taking things a step further thanks to its physical cooling fan. Today we will be running through the latest versions of and Tutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, 3D Mark Solar Bay, and 3D Mark Steel Nomad Light. And in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Which one of the two most powerful Android chipsets of 2025 will come out on top? This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things underway, we'll be checking their battery percentages at the start of the test, and of course we'll compare this at the end of the test for a milliamp hour per minute reading. We'll also be using an infrared heat gun here to test out their thermals between each benchmark test, then we'll test it at the start and compare it at the end as well. We're sitting at a room temperature of around 22.1 degrees in Celsius, and if you are interested before the test sitting at idle here, the Red Magic is the hottest and the Vivo is the coolest. It's going to be quite a long and very draining test on these devices in terms of battery, temperature, and of course scores, which we'll get to all of that at the end of this test. But for now, we're on Antutu version 10. And a couple things that have changed from version 9, for those of you who don't already know, version 10 has been out for a little while now. But in case you are unaware, CPU is now changed to optimize multi-core parallel processing. GPU now uses Unreal Engine 4. And there are two graphics benchmarks that being seasons, which is a high stress test, the one that you're seeing now. And there's also Coastline 2.0, which is for ordinary GPUs, which none of these devices actually have. So they should score pretty well in those. Memory has been optimized in terms of ROM to improve test efficiency and RAM has been split up in two parts for bandwidth and latency to demonstrate proper LPDDR performance. User experience has changed by adding in a couple things such as PDF processing, large pixel images processing above 2K and decoding of H.265 and encoding of H.264 video processing along with video editing since some people out there do video edit on their phones. I'm not one of those guys. Now, in case you guys were wondering the differences between the two chipsets, the Snapdragon 8 Elite has two prime cores and six performance cores, whereas the MediaTek Dimensity 9400 has one super performance core and it has three more prime cores and then four performance cores. So none of them have efficiency cores over here. Now, if you look at it in terms of prime cores, technically the MediaTek actually has four prime cores as opposed to the two in the Snapdragon. We'll get to it in a second again now, but for now we're looking at the temperatures after Antutu. And with that, we have the Red Magic 10 Pro having added the most in terms of temperature gain and also ended off after Antutu the hottest, whereas the OnePlus added the least and ended off the coolest after Antutu. And in terms of the Red Magic getting too hot, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Its outside temperature is hot, which means it dissipates heat correctly. In order to have the inside of it cool, the outside needs to heat up. That's literally the definition of heat dissipation. And now in terms of Geekbench version 6, which we'll be hopping into now, what's changed from Geekbench version 5? Version 5 had their multi-cores tested by multiple individual tasks, and this time multi-cores are tested by one overall workload, and all the cores work together on that shared objective. Now, another thing that is different with the Snapdragon 8 Elite and the MediaTek chip is that the Snapdragon is running on Orion 
cores, whereas the MediaTek is still running on Cortex cores. But there is a super performing Cortex core, that being the X925 on the MediaTek. And when it comes to temperatures, it's normal for temps to drop off the Geekbench since it's not as long or as demanding as Antutu. But if temperatures drop by a lot, like what you see with the Vivo here, it's usually a good indication of throttling. Throttling is when the device lowers its performance in order to prevent overheating and cool itself down. Now we're gonna be hopping into the first 3D Mark test, that being Wildlife Extreme. And Wildlife Extreme is a mobile graphics benchmark test, which is rendered at 4K. Regular Wildlife is rendered at 2K, so this one bumps it up to 4K and there is a 60 FPS cap here. So all of them should do okay, but they won't perform as well as a lower rendered resolution, but their GPUs are all pretty stellar. That being the Adreno 830G, GPU on the Snapdragon 8 Elite, so the three phones on the left hand side, and that runs at a 1.1 gigahertz clock speed. Whereas the MediaTek runs an Immortalis G925 MC1212 core GPU, and that runs at a staggering 1.612 gigahertz. Now we're currently testing out ray tracing performance in 3D Mark Solar Bay over here. And when it comes to ray tracing, both of the chipsets on all five of these devices do have hardware accelerated ray tracing. So they should have no issues over here. Though in my reviews that I've done on a couple of these phones, I did notice the dimensities integrated GPU performs slightly better than the Adreno found within the Snapdragon phones. But we'll see if that changes due to throttling and obviously running back-to-back -back benchmark tests here. Now we're gonna be jumping into Steel Nomad Lite. Now Steel Nomad Lite is a non-ray traced benchmark test and it is rendered at 2K resolution, 1440p that is, for high-end mobiles and get this, lightweight PCs since all of these phones are literally peaking on lightweight PCs. Over four gigahertz clock speeds on the Snapdragon chips here is literally PC level. So I'm really interested to see how they do or perform right at the end when we get to the scores. But after running through back to back to back 3D Mark benchmark tests, all of them gained temperature, except for the IQ, which dropped in temp. This once again indicates throttling, but we'll see how this affects it in its score later on. When it comes to overall temperature, the IQ13 gained the least temperature from start to finish and ended off the coolest, but it did seem to throttle a bit toward the end in 3D Mark, while the Red Magic 10 Pro gained the most temp and ended the hottest, but it always tried to perform at its best and never throttled. That said, usually phones that dissipate heat well like the Red Magic and have higher outer temps suffer when it comes to battery drain since it kept working extremely hard. So it makes sense to see the Red Magic receive the worst milliamp hour per minute battery drain. Phones like the IQ and Vivo favor battery over performance, hence why they both throttled, leaving the Vivo with the best milliamp hour per minute reading. I guess you kind of have to decide what matters to you most, battery or performance. But funny enough, the IQ13 actually came first in Antutu, but again, this was before it started throttling in 3D Mark. The Oppo and Red Magic weren't too far off though, coming in second and third place, but the OnePlus and Vivo trailed the pack. The IQ once again placed first in Geekbench single core scores, but this time the OnePlus came very close in second place and the Red Magic was just behind in third. The Oppo came fourth and the Vivo came fifth due to throttling. When it comes to Geekbench multi-core scores, the Red Magic took home the win by quite a bit, and it was followed by the IQ, then the OnePlus, then the Oppo, and the Vivo was once again dead last due to throttling. But the Vivo bounced back in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, coming ahead of the IQ, which performed terribly due to throttling. The OnePlus came third here, the Oppo placed second, and the Red Magic grabbed another win. The Red Magic was way ahead in 3D Mark Solar Bay, once again getting it first place. The OnePlus pulled ahead of the Oppo this time, and the IQ continued to throttle. Placements were exactly the same in 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite, with the Red Magic outperforming the rest by quite a bit. The IQ disappointed me once again due to it throttling. However, this is the most amount of benchmark tests I've run in a single video before, so I was kind of expecting worse battery performance and some throttling. Overall, the Red Magic 10 Pro placed first, the OnePlus 13 came second, the Oppo Find X8 Pro made its way up to third, the IQ 13 came in fourth overall, and the Vivo X200 Pro came last, but it performed the best in terms of battery. Yeah, some scores were higher than others, but I doubt you'd notice much of a difference on the daily, as they are all kitted with very impressive flagship chipsets. What you will notice though is battery and cooling, so keep that in mind before you buy one. As always, this is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.